my main attitude to most of my work is like bringing people together from different fields, start to collaborate and maybe even a project comes together by different participants, one has different skills and then on this project they meet and maybe have an idea they work on together. And bridging different disciplines is sometimes difficult but I think it can be very fruitful. Another microscope that's kind of this whole nanotechnology issue is the atomic force microscope. Now we have a mechanical thing that goes on a, on a surface and touches it. And we kind of measure the force because we reflect the laser here that's reflected up there and we measure kind of the position of the laser. We go and it could just go over like our surface and we measure the, the deflection of our little... It's like a vinyl player, like if you play a record more or less. So it's like you really scratch the surface. And, but this, you can see individual molecules. So this is, um, this is like chromosomes, so DNA, but you can see really like individual proteins or something with that. Or people have moved around individual atoms like in the 80s. That was like the start of nanotechnology. This AFM, last year at, at Microwave Festival, where there was an exhibition called The Dark Side of the Cell. And has anybody seen it? I haven't seen it. I would love to see it once. So what they have been doing, they put one of these AFM tips on a human cell, and then there was like a modulation of the cell membrane, and they measured this, and somehow used that for sonification, and they made some installation about the structure of the cell and make music, measure music from the cell. And on one hand, it's a nice kind of installation. On the other hand, it's also a real science project, because obviously there seems to be differences in this modulation depending on if it's a cancer cell or a non-cancer cell. So there's like a scientific part and an artistic interpretation of the project. We do DIY microscopy. So like similar to this, everything that people could do 300 years ago, I think we should be able to do nowadays. But obviously it's not so easy. As you see, the structure is one of the most important things. So like also vibration. If everybody works on the same table, it's almost impossible. So this is why we have other tables. So if you want, you can just move to another table. And so there's a lot of like organisms and let's say whatever life forms on Earth, as you know. So this is one way to show, I think this is all animalia. No, no, this is just everything, plants. Yeah, this is like the whole world of living. So it different groups. So all this blue stuff, that's different bacteria. But a lot of different species of bacteria. The definition of a species in bacteria anyway is a bit difficult because if one bacteria meets another one, they just exchange genes. You know, hey, what do you have? I have this one. This is really useful. And they just exchange it. <laughs> while we have to have sex and offspring, and so it takes like a while to change our genes. Not at least yet. So we might have other ways in the future, but we can discuss this later. And then there's some like weird things, I don't know what. <laughs> and then this is, I think, eukaryotic, I don't know in English, eukaryotic cells, they're called. So they have a cell nucleus, this one, where the DNA is stored in a nucleus and they have a membrane, while bacteria have the DNA all over like the, their like cell membrane. So there's algae, there's protozoa. Protozoa is just like these small things in water. So we're looking at protozoa mostly. There is fungi. And there is plants, you know that, and there is animals. So animals, you know what it is. So we look at this microorganism, and the one we're looking at, these two, for example, this is the tardigrade again. Uh, again, this is an animal. It's a multicellular animal. It's got like maybe two, 3,000 cells. It's got like an intestine. It's got a little sensor on its head to detect light. It's got these little claws and muscles, kind of. Another beast is this one. This is called a Daphnia. They're like about half a millimeter big. You see them in every lake. And this other work I showed from Anthony Hall, he was reflecting a laser on this, on a resistor to kind of generate sounds. We might find them in, in like pots around. So these are microorganisms. They're like multicellular small animals. So when we do microscopy, we have to be aware of, of these new length scales of these different sizes. We have kind of a feeling of, of our physical world around us, like stuff we can touch and see and feel. So this is kind of how we 
when we now use scientific instruments to go to another length scale, it might be stars and moons and like microorganisms or like atoms, you have to kind of abstract a bit your like feelings so your, intu in your intuition doesn't work anymore. And so one guy, he's an economist, he said, is any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex and more violent. It take a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. That's a quotation from a book called Small is Beautiful. It's not about microscopy, it's about economics. <laughs> in like economics in developing countries, like, you know, you have these like small microeconomies and stuff like that. He's a Buddhist and environmentalist and he's kind of very philosopher as well. So he's not a mainstream capitalist economist. So there's different length scales. On one hand, there's fabrication, like what can we really build? So this is like an integrated microsystem. These are big electrodes. This looks like your mobile phone inside, but there's like tiny little microelectrodes. It might be, for example, uh, the chip of your camera or something. So it's like inside, but outside there's always like connectors. So that's kind of this large scale. We can still build things of that length scale with our hands. Then there's like microfabrication, like tiny little motors and gears. That's something you need like a high-tech MEMS factory, like micro fabrication factory, it's a bit more difficult. And then there's another method, like I call it nano manipulation, where you re really like manipulate individual atoms. We cannot do that by hand so far. In physics, there's like physical length scales. <coughs> you don't have to know everything, but there's like different meters. You know, it goes from femtometer up to iota meter. This is gonna be like different, you know, solar system and galaxies. Down here is like far below an individual atom. Um, we are about here, human beings, you know. We walk like maybe a kilometer, sometimes we fly like maybe here. And now using a microscope, we can go down and look at this range here, like around micrometers. We can still see by the eye a bit less than a millimeter. And so that's kind of interesting, so it's like, a lot of stuff happening. If we look now at different electromagnetic radiation, there's light, for example, so it's got a wavelength, and light, the wavelength of light is in the range of like 400 to 600 nanometers, so a bit less than a micrometer. So that's the electromagnetic rays we can detect by our eye, and when we do optics, this is also like the wavelength that goes through our lenses, so we cannot really see things that are smaller than the wavelength of length because it just passes it. So if we want to look at the nanoparticle or like a virus, the light does not interact with it, it just passes it. And there's other like wavelengths like microwaves and radios. And so if I want to listen to radio, I need an antenna. So I need like a big thing to look at this long wavelength like radiation. If I go down, there's like other waves like ultraviolet or like x-rays or even like nuclear like gamma rays. Infrared is another like, it's all the same physical entity, it's all electromagnetic radiation. There's no difference, the only difference is the energy and the wavelength. Just coincidence that the human being, our eyes, just look at this one. We can feel this as well because this generates heat in our body and some people say they can like feel microwaves, I don't know, just physically, you need to have a big metal pole somewhere in your body to do that, but who knows? I don't, we don't really know. So up here is like what it interacts with. So the infrared interacts with molecules. It makes them hot. This radio interacts with long poles, like antennas. Microwaves, you need like small kind of antennas, like in our mobile phone. We use microwaves in our mobile phones. But I want to go more into biological length scales. So what we see here is just like a, a drawing. In the back here, like this part is a cell, like a, maybe a human cell. So it's got a bone cell membrane, it's got a nucleus. In the front there's a bacteria. So it's much smaller. Bacteria is much smaller than one of our normal cells. So that we might have bacteria going into our cells and then we might have a disease. And viruses are even much smaller than a bacteria. They're not even considered as real life forms because they cannot proliferate. They need a host to like multiply and proliferate. And they're more like a little crystal of genetic information, that's it. So there's a nice bar. So obviously a bacterium is around one micrometer. 